Jensen's turn to serve. Oh, there's a little miscommunication between the teammates. I very much disagree with the invite-up ball there. Worked out in the end, but let's back this up and take a look at it. Okay. We're going to go pretty slow through this one. Okay. So medium range uh, on the serve, and the ball's still bouncing right about there. Uh, Todd hasn't really improved her get-up speed, but luckily she put it right in between the two of them. So there was a bit of a delay, and Jansen gets a very high kind of lob of the kitchen, gives him another lob. Irvine does essentially what a drop is, and the issue right here is, as you can see, Jensen doesn't move forward. So I agree right here. Uh, Parento sees that neither one of them are taking ground on any of these shots. They just keep getting them back. So she changes her mind and says, I'm going to drop it. Look how far past the kitchen that ball goes. So this is an off one. If you're going to play that shot, which I don't recommend, that's just an awful bad shot to do. Number two, she literally hits it to Irvine. Let's take a look here. From this ball... There is where the big opening is, right? So she could have smashed it right down the middle and you have this big giant opening. But let's also look at these lines mean the exact same thing. For I'll draw it this way. For she dropped it directly in front. That's how far uh, Jensen has to go. If she drops it directly in front, look how far uh, Irvine has to go. But she, instead of dropping it directly in front of her, which would be the longest distance for her opponents, she hits it to the left, which now gives it about half the distance, if not less, for all uh, Irvine had to do is now do a mid-court drop. And so it just doesn't make any sense. That's just a horrible mental error on that I'm going to stop bringing the pace and invite them up. So I really hope you guys learn from this point that if you got them back, keep them back, keep smashing. Um, it just doesn't make any sense that you think you're going to play somebody, hit a drop like that, and they're not going to come get it, especially one of that quality. Okay, so Irvine does this drop, and now they're almost to the kitchen. Jensen goes cross court. And they are essentially now in the dink battle. Both Jensen and Irvine are staying back a little bit extra. They're definitely staying off this kitchen line. They're making some conscious decision here. And because they're off when this attack comes, when they try and attack back, they don't hit up on it. And this is the big reason why we say you always got to know where are you on the court. Irvine is right there. We'll do it off the front foot of uh, Jensen. And Jensen is right there. And so when this ball comes, they're on the defensive, right? They are, I mean, Irvine's got to be at least six feet, maybe more off the kitchen line. So Prento sees this and realizes, hey, they're going to stay back there. I have the advantage. I'll speed this up. I've got less risk because the ball's going to come back slower. So she's only doing a little flick on this. This is not a strong ball. It's not coming really fast. She's just like, hey, you're, you're on the defense. I'm going to see if I can keep you back. And the big mistake is, as you see, the paddle wind up and swing by Irving trying to force and attack this ball. What they should do is reset this ball and then actually get up to a neutral position. You are not in a neutral position until both of you are here at the kitchen line with your opponent. If you are off this line, you're on the defensive, your opponent's on the offensive, and they were making their way up. They had not actually even gone to neutral. 
and Irving sees this little flick shot and instead of resetting goes, okay, let's go for it and then hits it down to the net. 